as you start to get outside the coverage area, the response should fall off equally for all frequencies until you get to the null point, which is the point at which the microphone is least sensitive to sound. So in the case of a cardioid microphone, heart-shaped pattern, the null point is the back end of the microphone and the sweet spot is the on-axis point. And as I start to move off axis on the microphone, the level will drop off equally in all frequencies if it's a well-designed microphone. Unfortunately, some microphones aren't really well designed. And what happens is as you start to drop off, some frequencies drop off, but other frequencies still remain there, which is why some microphones, even though they say they're directional, aren't necessarily directional. Knowing these angles can help us in placing microphones and can help us in dealing with feedback in a live sound situation where I'm using monitor speakers. Let's take a look at these angles. The cardioid microphone, the most common directional microphone, is a heart-shaped pattern with about 131 degrees angle of acceptance. The null point is at the back end of the microphone. The null point. So if I'm doing a, using a cardioid microphone, it's not going to pick up anything behind it, it's going to pick up in front of it. As I squeeze that pattern down to make it a more narrower angle of acceptance, I get to a hypercardioid. And now my angle of acceptance goes from 131 down to 105 degrees. So the microphone is less sensitive to stuff off to the sides. However, the null point changes. And the null point moves from the back end of the microphone to coming into here. And that's important, especially if you're doing live sound. In a studio situation where you're recording a drum set, knowing where that null point is if I'm using hypercardioid microphones to get a narrow angle of acceptance is going to keep it from picking up other things. The oddball in there is the bi-directional, which is what the ribbon microphone is. And it's typically 130 degrees equally on the front and the rear of the capsule. So a bi-directional microphone is going to pick up from the front, pick up from the back, reject from the sides which is why you often saw a ribbon microphone on a table between two people on an old TV show, because it's going to pick up Larry King from this side and pick up his guest from that side with a single microphone. Now, knowing these angles and knowing the directionality pickup patterns allow me to do some cool things. So here's a lead vocal and monitor wedges in a live situation. By putting the monitor wedge right in front of the lead vocalist, he can hear himself, or she can hear himself, and the microphone is not going to pick up that full back sound coming back. So it's not going to feed back. On the other hand, if the vocalist wants to work the microphone a little bit further away, I can use a hypercardioid microphone, but I have to remember at the back end of the microphone on the hypercardioid, the null point moved from here to here. So now there's a little sensitivity back here. So I use two monitor speakers and they're off to the sides. So if you see two monitor speakers on a vocalist, it's not because they're a diva, it's probably because you're using a hypercardioid microphone to get a greater working distance. I can take that to, <clears throat> to background vocals. So now I've got three background vocalists who blend very well. I can use a single microphone on those vocalists and a single monitor because they blend very well. Anybody here do sound in the church? I always pick on the church people with this one. In this case, I've got three vocalists, but the middle one is the diva, pastor's wife. She can't sing, but she is in the background vocal group. And so they give each one of the vocalists their own microphone. They give them a hypercardioid microphone so that the sound guy can help. <laughs> because she is so far off, he is even funny. But I use two monitors because of the null points. Hi, oh, come on in and have a seat. Uh, just wanted to say hi for a second. Welcome in SAE. Oh, thank you. Glad you made it. And thank thank you. you for being here. I'm glad to be here. So anyway, by knowing that, we can deal with the diva. She still has her own microphone, and she's singing really good. The other mics are not really picking her up because they're a narrower pickup pattern, better angle of, of rejection, and nobody will ever know except the sound guy. Now, let's talk about a little bit of physics here. This is known as the inverse square, wall, square law. And the inverse square law says that as I move further away from the microphone, or from the sound source, the sound becomes weaker at some rate we can calculate. There's all kinds of formulas out there. 
One that's most common is as I double the distance, the sound level decreases by a factor of four. The result is a drop of six dB in sound pressure level, which is a substantial decrease. So going from one inch away to two inches away, I've just dropped six dB. From going from two inches to four inches, I've just dropped six more dB. From four inches to eight inches, I've just dropped 18 dB from my original thing. Now, what does that really mean, reality-wise? The closer you are, the louder you get. So if you're dealing with a situation where somebody can't hear the vocalist, tell the vocalist to work the microphone closer. If you need to get isolate a sound source more in a recording, move the microphone closer to the sound source. If you want to get more of a blend of things, move the microphone further away from the sound source. So the closer you are, the louder you get. Now we like to talk about something called distance factor or working distance. The video guys like to call that reach. What's the reach of this microphone? I've got this, I've got this shotgun microphone for film work. What's the reach? First of all, microphones don't reach. In fact, if I could develop a microphone that could reach out and grab the sound of the gentleman in the back row and make him as loud as I am from where I'm standing, I wouldn't be here today because I'd be on a beach in Acapulco with a drink with an umbrella on it next to me, enjoying the sunshine. Unfortunately, that's a law of physics that we can't break. Now, if I had a video camera, I could zoom in on the gentleman in the back. I'm picking on you, I don't know who you are, but I'm picking on you anyway. I could zoom in and get a really nice head and shoulder shot. And then he starts to speak, and I've got a microphone on the camera, and he's still going to sound like he's 10 feet away. Even though I filled the frame with a head and shoulder shot, a nice close-up, because I can zoom in. I can't zoom in with a microphone. Even though you might see some little cheesy microphones in some little discount store that say zoom mic or <laughs> telephoto mic, that's a misnomer. Microphones can't zoom in and bring the sound source closer. What they can do is by tightening up the pickup pattern, by reducing the angle of acceptance, I can start to reject more sound from the sides. So if you're watching sports or watching video or reality television, you see the guy with the shotgun mic on the boom pole, that microphone is rejecting more sound from the sides, but it's not going to bring the talent closer. But we still use the term reach in the industry just because we've used the term reach for a long, long time.